You've probably never read about the Tulsa race riots in history books when you were in school, but it's definitely a story that's worth knowing about, especially considering the riots that are currently taking place in Baltimore. The Tulsa race riots occurred in 1921, and it was basically a war by the KKK against a very successful and prosperous black community referred to as Black Wall Street. According to reports, the best description of Black Wall Street, or Little Africa as it was also known, would be to compare it to a mini Beverly Hills. It was the golden door of the black community during the early 1900s, and it proved that African Americans could create a successful infrastructure. Black America's most prosperous community, Black Wall Street in Tulsa, Oklahoma, went up in flames June 1, 1921, in a KKK-led Tulsa race riot. This community consisted of individuals that looked out for one another. But more than that, it consisted of individuals that were beyond successful. Some of the most intelligent minds got together and created some of the most successful businesses. They looked out for one another. They created an education system that we can only dream of today. They believed in nepotism only because these black individuals had been so disenfranchised by society that they felt that they can only look out for one another. And as a result, money stayed in their community. In fact, it was passed off about a hundred times within the community before it left the community. Right now, when it comes to a black neighborhood, a dollar lasts in that neighborhood for about 15 minutes and then it leaves and so they managed to create a society that was successful they were prospering but it turns out that white individuals in neighboring uh, areas were not too happy about that particularly the KKK so this led to a riot and the way the KKK crafted this riot shows you exactly how deep that jealousy and that envy was what they did is they accused a man of raping a white woman but of course that man didn't rape anyone. They just wanted to accuse him so they could go into the community and start violence and trouble. And so they accuse this man. A number of KKK members go into the community. And as one black man is armed, ready to defend himself, he's confronted by a white individual who asks him what he's about to do with that gun. And he tells the white man, well, I'm going to do what I need to do if I need to defend myself. At that point, there was a physical altercation over the gun. The white man gets shot and he's killed and then the riots erupt. Now, the outcome of this is beyond disturbing. The night's carnage left 3,000 African Americans dead and over 600 successful businesses lost. Among these were 21 churches, 21 restaurants, 30 grocery stores, and two movie theaters, plus a hospital, a bank, a post office, libraries, schools, law offices, a half dozen private airplanes, and even a bus system. So the KKK goes into the successful black community and absolutely destroys it. And so when we talk about violence in the United States and when we talk about things like white privilege or institutional racism, this is why it's incredibly important to take these issues seriously. Because when you look at the black community and you wonder why it is that they're angry, why it is that they're rioting, why it is that they're fighting back against things like police brutality and institutional racism, you have to look at the historical context of this country. You have to consider the fact that there was no restitution in this case. These people, 3,000 people, lost their lives. Their businesses were lost. What they had built was completely demolished. And you fast forward to today and you look at statistics and you realize, yeah, maybe things aren't quite as violent as the Tulsa race riots, but you have to consider the fact that African Americans are four times more likely to get arrested for marijuana. In fact, if you have a black sounding name, you are 50% less likely to get hired for a job. When you look at our private prisons, or if you look at the school to prison pipeline, African Americans and Latinos are much more likely to be victims of that. And so these are the types of things that are holding them back. This is a type of institutional racism that we talk about on the show on a regular basis. And this is a type of story that we don't learn about in history classes. And again, you look at something like this and you realize that if you just create an opportunity for people to prosper, they will prosper, regardless of their race, regardless of their background. That's why education is important. That's why making sure that you give everyone an equal opportunity is important. And that's why it's incredibly important to take stories like the Baltimore riots as seriously as possible and understand that even though there are those who are violent and are doing things that might be considered wrong, there are also those who are legitimately arguing about something that they've been victims of for a very long time.